Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship this morning. We are so glad that you are able to connect with us here in the sanctuary, and you have invited us into your homes through technology. It's good to be able to worship God together. I want to let you know this week we have a service called Blue Christmas tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock. It will be on YouTube. It's a service particularly for persons who have experienced loss in this past year, for whom Christmas is not the completely joyous celebration that it often is for persons. We know this year there's been a great deal of loss in many ways. So if you think that might be helpful for you to experience this reflective service, please plan to do so tomorrow night at 7 and the music for the service will be Carpe Deum. And then for Christmas Eve, we have a service planned for 7 p.m., again on YouTube, with a variety of music and, and celebration of Christ's birth. In addition, you can feel comfortable coming here anytime Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and going to the outdoor nativity as a family, as the group of people that you have gone through this pandemic with, and sing a song, a carol, say a prayer, celebrate Christ's birth at the outdoor nativity. There will be luminaires lit up as, as the night comes, but um, there will be no organized service. It's just a time for individual families and persons to come to the manger and sing a carol or pray. And now may we worship God together today. face the pain of life and embrace the assurance that light is already here and always coming. Amen. We have lit the candles for hope, love, and joy. This week we light all four of our purple candles. Hope, love, joy, and now peace.
Merry to everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The scripture reading is from the Gospel of John in chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. This is the word of God from a long, long, long time ago for us, the people of God today. Thanks be to God. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you're tuning in today to, um, to our service. And we're getting so close to Christmas that I imagine your door hangers are really, really full of things. And you only have a very few bulbs on your tree that have not been colored in. We hope that you've been enjoying that. Now I want to tell you something very special about Christmas Eve. Our scouts are going to be putting luminaires out by our outdoor nativity. And we are inviting you and all other families to come whenever you want to the nativity Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the day after. You can come there, sing a carol, say a prayer, spend a time with your family at the outdoor nativity. We feel that's the safest way that we can all enjoy some time there. And we invite you to sing and to spread the news that Christ is born. Now, after our prayer, we'll hear our children's choir sing. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for these boys and girls that are listening and watching, and all the boys and girls of this congregation, community, and indeed the world. Thank you for this congregation that loves them and cares for them. Amen.
know that whether you voice prayer concerns aloud or hold them silently in your hearts and minds, that the God who has created us and loves us unconditionally hears and receives all of our prayers. So in that spirit, would you join me for this prayer? God of peace, in the beauty of these Advent days, we have made quite a journey. Some have traveled great distances, physically or spiritually, and some have not ventured far from home or heart at all. Some have experienced the joy of anticipation and some the agony of anticipation, while others have known grief indescribable or peace overwhelming. It's only a few more days until we will celebrate Christmas Eve and your incarnation among us. And in that time, some will long to gather with family and others may long for solitude. Some will reconnect with old friends or relatives, if only online, and others may get lost in a lifetime of memories of loved ones past. Give us grace, dear God, in these next few days that we might be prepared for your arrival again, an arrival that comes to us amidst ongoing news of COVID restrictions and COVID infections, among COVID vaccine progress and COVID vaccine questions, not to mention frontline workers who face COVID risks daily because they have no choice or because they feel deeply called to care for the other. Accompany their families and friends that they each and all might sense your presence among them, keeping watch and praying with them. And for those whose lives have been forever changed by COVID, for those who will have an empty chair at the dinner table, for those who will face Christmas morning alone, and for those who will savor memories of loved ones gone too soon, may your spirit also be born anew in them to soothe their pain and to keep them company. Where violence seems to have prevailed yet again, may we continue to work for justice without losing hope where hunger and homelessness cross our paths, may we pause, even if briefly, to look in someone's eyes and see them as a person born to parents and not just an issue or a label or an interruption to our holiday preparations. Loving God, give us grace to hear you speak a word of hope and joy and love and peace right into our hearts and our minds. Give us grace to speak words always, words of waiting, preparing, proclaiming, and rejoicing, and then give us grace to respond to your word. Hear us in the coming days as we silently name those we know and those we don't whom we will entrust into your care. So we pray all of this, O oh God, in the name of Emmanuel, God with us, as we pray the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power the glory forever. Amen.
Please pray with me. Amen. Our Advent journey in this most unusual year has helped us to focus on the strength and value of music in Advent, in our Christmas, in our lives. In just a few moments, we are going to experience beautiful music from the majority of our musicians who have walked with us during this incredible journey around the sun called 2020. Tim Berridge is in quarantine, recovering from COVID and is unable to sing, but hopes to be back in January. Christmas is a time for stories. And those stories, as well as music, enlighten us and open us up to the presence of God even and especially within us to be shared, to be given birth in this crazy world. The stories of this season, they are told and retold and often bring tears with each telling. But this week, I heard a story for the first time that I want to share with you. In 1994, two Americans were invited by the Russian Department of Education to teach morals and ethics in their prisons, at their businesses, fire and police departments, and even at a large orphanage. They were also told that they could teach from the perspective of their faith. So they went as witnesses to the light, like John the Baptist, to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. They believed that Jesus, the true light that enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. The experience of these two in the Russian orphanage proved to be particularly illuminating. According to one of them, Will Fish, the name of a real person perhaps, or a synonym for an anonymous Christian who is willing to fish for people, there were about a hundred boys and girls in the orphanage, children who had been abandoned, abused, and left in the care of a government-run program. Fish tells the following story of what happened when the holiday season approached, and it was time for the orphans to hear, for the first time, the traditional story of Christmas. We told them about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem, says Fish. Finding no room in the inn, the couple went to a stable where the baby Jesus was born and placed in a manger. Throughout the story, the children and orphanage staff sat in amazement as they listened. Some sat on the edges of their stools, trying to grasp every word. Completing the story, we gave the children three small pieces of cardboard to make a crude manger. Each child was given a small paper square cut from yellow napkins I had brought with me. No colored paper was available in the city. Following instructions, the children tore the paper and carefully laid strips in the manger for straw. 
small squares of flannel cut from a worn out nightgown an American lady was throwing away as she left Russia were used for the baby's blanket. A doll-like baby was cut from tan felt we had brought from the United States. The orphans were busy assembling their mangers as I walked among them to see if they needed any help. All went well until I got to one table where little Misha sat. He looked to be about six years old and finished his project. As I looked at the little boy's manger, I was startled to see not one, but two babies in the manger. Quickly, I called for the translator to ask the lad why there were two babies in the manger. Crossing his arms in front of him and looking at his completed manger scene, the child began to repeat the story very seriously. For such a young boy who had heard the Christmas story only once, he related the happenings accurately until he came to the part where Mary put the baby Jesus in the manger. Then Misha started to ad lib. He made up his own ending to the story as he said, and when Mary laid the baby in the manger, Jesus looked at me and asked me if I had a place to stay. I told him I have no mama and I have no papa, so I don't have any place to stay. Then Jesus told me I could stay with him. But I told him I couldn't because I didn't have a gift to give him like everybody else did. But I wanted to stay with Jesus so much, so I thought about what I had that maybe I could use for a gift. I thought maybe, maybe if I kept him warm, that would be a good gift. So I asked Jesus, if I keep you warm, will that be a good enough gift? And Jesus told me, if you keep me warm, that will be the best gift anybody ever gave me. So I got in the manger. And then Jesus looked at me and he told me I could stay with him for always. As little Misha finished his story, his eyes brimmed full of tears. The little orphan had found someone who would never abandon nor abuse him. Someone who would stay with him always. That's what we celebrate. Emmanuel, God with us. On this Sunday when we light the peace candle, I want to draw your attention to one more thing. If you have a couple extra moments this week, Google Amazing Peace, a Christmas poem by Maya Angelou. In this struggling world in which we live, it speaks to our fears, our joys, our hopes, our loves, and our search for peace. We celebrate the vaccine, and yet we still hear of another disaster, a mass shooting, a racially motivated atrocity, an act of domestic violence, a broken relationship, a community in need. We search for peace. And that feeling of God with us and with our neighbors, in her poem written for the tree lighting at the White House in 2005, Maya asked, how can we look beyond complexion and see community and celebrate Christmas as the halting of hate time? I encourage you later today or sometime this week to read the poem fully but now, let's listen to the music of Christmas. Hello, friends. In a normal year at about this time, we would be gathering together with the choir and some special musicians and performing a, a special work, maybe a master work, maybe something that we had spent most of the fall working on. But as we all know, this year is different. And so in this year, we have tried to keep the music flowing in various ways here at WUMC, but one of the ways that we thought we might still contribute something this Advent season is to provide a little special music for you. It's not as it would usually be, but we, we do believe we've come together with something really nice that you're really going to enjoy. And we hope that in this strange year that we've all been in, that this can add to your holiday season as we continue through Advent on our way toward Christmas. And so from all of us here, your music team at Worthington UMC, 
we say Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Thank you. 
In this season of waiting, know this. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the light has dawned and shines on all people. Fill the night, left by sadness, with messages of peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that peace alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.